Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 3D, where we're talking about the relationships between enzymes and phenotypes. We'll talk about examples of cauliflowers, examples of flowers. We'll look at a couple of biochemical pathways that affect things that you probably see all the time. One is the blue pigments of morning glory flowers, and the other is the colors of the peppers that we can buy in the supermarket or from a grocer. So we'll start with the cauliflowers. Um, cauliflowers are normally, as we all know, white. It's a normal cauliflower. But you might not realize, depending on where you live, you might not realize that we can get cauliflowers in other colors as well. Cauliflowers come in purple and in yellow. They come in green. And I love this one. This is a Romanesco cauliflower. I've never had it, although I hear it's very common and widely available in Europe. And I hope to get to the farmer's market this fall and get myself a Romanesco cauliflower. In addition to having a mute, so all of these differences arise from differences in the genetic pathways, the biochemical pathways that produce pigments. In the Romanesco case, I think that the cauliflower fails to lose the normal green pigment of leaves, but it also has this very strange developmental mutation that causes it to grow into these very exotic shapes. Now, pigment pathways play important roles in flowers. This is, um, they make excellent examples because plant breeders have selected for variants that have mutations at different steps in different pathways to produce all the different pigments that we see. Here's a lot of rhododendrons blooming at UBC's botanical garden. And here are gorgeous tulips at another botanical garden in Vancouver, the Van Dusen Garden. And all of these differences in color and in shape are the result of mutations that change the activity of catalytic and regulatory proteins. Most of the pigment differences will be due to catalytic proteins, but not all of us. So here's the first example I wanted to show you. This is the morning glory, Ipomea. And morning glories, most morning glories, have lovely blue flowers. Now we'll see other colors later in this module. But the blue pigment is the result of a biochemical pathway that synthesizes a blue molecule called cyanidin. And each of these steps is a catalytic step carried out by a catalytic enzyme. These are the names of the enzymes, each of which is specified by a gene in the genome of Ipomea, the morning glory and defects anywhere in this pathway can prevent the synthesis of the blue pigment and cause the flowers to be white. You'll see this in a upcoming lecture. Now, a pigment pathway that I'm particularly, uh, I like a lot, is the pathway that controls the colors of the capsum of capsicum peppers, the bell peppers, that we are very widely available all over the world, I think, now. These are the sweet peppers, not hot peppers. These are sweet um, garden peppers. And the wild type, the normal color for these peppers is this deep red color. But if you've been in a produce market lately, you'll have seen that peppers come in a range of other colors. There are yellow ones, there are orange ones, there are ones that are almost white. They're sort of purpley brown ones, and they're all bell peppers. And now I'm just going to talk about the difference between the yellow and the red. So red peppers are red because they make a pigment called capsanthin. You don't need to know the name of that, but they make a red pigment. Sometimes it's a family of red pigments. And this red pigment is synthesized by an enzyme that's the product of a gene, the enzyme is called capsanthin capsorubin synthase, abbreviated CCS, because no one wants to say that, but the gene is commonly referred to as gene Y. So this is the name of the gene, gene Y. 
it's known in two alleles. The allele indicated by the capital Y encodes a functional protein, makes the red pigment from this precursor. This is the substrate for the CSS enzyme. This yellow pigment, um, which comes in two forms, this is the product of the enzyme. The enzyme, the gene specifying the enzyme, has this functional allele, and it has a defective allele called little y, a lowercase y. There are actually several different defective alleles. They're all called little y alleles because they're all defective. Some of these alleles are deletions. One of them is known to be a frame shift, but they all fail to produce a functional protein. And as a result, the peppers, the yellow peppers that you buy in the supermarket, are yellow because they can't convert this yellow pigment into a red pigment. So here's an easy question. Do you think that yellow red bell peppers are mutant versions of red peppers? Well, I hope you got this one right. Um, one of the goals of this course is to help you realize that mutant food is not dangerous. Mutant food is no more dangerous than wild type food. In fact, almost all the food that we eat has been selected for particular mutations that make it more attractive as food. Mutant food is certainly not illegal. And although the yellow color is a natural product, it's not the natural final product of the gene. The final product of, of, the, of the pathway, the final product, is the red pigment. So what we've done, we've looked at examples of phenotypes caused by catalytic proteins. We looked at food, at cauliflowers, we looked at flowers, lots of flowers. You'll be seeing more flowers as in this module. And then we went back to looking at food, looking at red and yellow peppers. Um, and for the first time, we were able to think of these things in terms of the products of pathways of biochemical steps catalyzed by enzymes that were the product of genes. And we started to think about what's the phenotype that's caused when the gene is defective. Now, coming up next, we're going to switch from thinking about catalytic proteins to thinking about structural proteins. We're really only going to talk about one, the skin protein elastin. I hope to see you there.